Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating this to-do list, which you can see on screen with all of its guides on it. Let me turn those off. So that is what our final outcome looks like. And actually, we're even going to go as far as putting both of our to-do lists on one sheet of paper so you can print two on a sheet and make the best use of your paper when you're printing. So these are gonna be print ready. We're gonna use some flourishes to add some decorative elements. We're gonna create our own ribbons from scratch and we're using all free fonts. I'm gonna give you the color palette and we're gonna be good to go. One thing that I want to mention is I'm changing things up a little bit with this tutorial. So I have an app installed which is recording all of my keystrokes. Like if I hit the space bar, you can see it's gonna show up on screen. So I don't have to talk through every single keyboard shortcut, which takes a lot of time sometimes and can kind of be a little overwhelming. So I just wanna give you a heads up that they're going to be showing up on screen. And whenever you see this icon for command, if you're on a PC, just substitute that substitute that for control. So if I say, if it says command C, just pretend it's control C. So that's a little FYI for PC users. Got it? All right, so let's just jump in and get started. So I'm gonna go file, new, and I'm going to input three and a half inches by seven inches, which is a typical size for a to-do list. And then I'm going to add in a bleed because we've got some artwork that's extending past the artboards. Whenever you do that, you wanna make sure your document has a bleed. So the standard print bleed size is an eighth of an inch, which is equivalent to 0.125 inches. Okay, so down here, color mode, CMYK, because we are intending to have this printed, and raster effects is your resolution, which is set at 300, which is the standard print resolution. Once you have all of this, hit okay. All right, so we've got our brand new document. I'm going to bring in our color palette for this. Just doing a little bit of housekeeping here, so we can move this right along. And let me also bring in, I'm using um, my Vector Leaves and Flourishes kit, uh, which you definitely don't need to use, but uh, it's really versatile and a nice um, helpful tool to have when you want some extra decorative elements. So I'm gonna be borrowing from this kit. I'll leave a link in the video description if you wanna check that out. Okay, so now that we have everything, let me walk you through the different colors um, that I'm using. If you wanna steal this color palette, by all means, feel free. So I'm gonna click on each one of them and I'm gonna bring it up nice and big over here in my color palette so you can grab the exact color build. So this is the green, this is the yellow, this is the light blue, the medium blue, and the dark blue. Okay, and there's two fonts that we're using. We're using a font called Baybass New, and it's in the book weight. And then we're also using a font called Railway, which is pretty popular. And we're using the semi-bold weight of that. And we're gonna set, whenever we use either of the fonts, we're using all caps. So just an FYI about that. Either turn your caps lock on, or in your character palette, just make sure you click on this little icon right here, and that'll make sure it's always all caps when you write. Okay. Now that we've got all that taken care of, we're gonna start designing. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a rectangle tool, which you can grab by hitting M or hitting this little icon over here in your toolbox. And I'm just gonna freehand out a ribbon. And a really handy way of um, making a ribbon really quick is see the center node. If I drag my cursor over here, you can see it kind of lines up. And once it lines up, I'm gonna hit the plus key on my keyboard, click once, then I'm gonna hit the A key on my keyboard for my direct select tool. And then I'm just gonna tap my left arrow key and bring it in. And that's just a really fast way. Now I've got a ribbon. Okay, so next I'm gonna set some text on this. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard for my text tool. I'm going to change my character to Baybass now. And I've got my little icon selected right here. So it's gonna type all caps. I'm gonna change the weight to book and I'm gonna type out, let's do this. And I'm gonna change the color by hitting I on my keyboard to eyedropper this yellow so we can see it. I'm gonna put this right on top of the ribbon. Uh, grab a corner node, hold shift, click and drag to keep it proportional. And if the letters are feeling a little tight, you can come in here and this is your tracking. So tracking is um, how far apart your letters are across all the letters. Kerning is the space between each individual letter. So if we wanna apply a space to all of them at once, that's called tracking. So I'm gonna put in 25 right here and just space them out a little bit, a little bit more. All right, so that's feeling pretty good. So we're gonna go with it. 
And next, in order to make it nice and angled like this, we're gonna use our shear tool. And all you're gonna do is select everything, come over here. If you don't see it right here, you can just click and drag down, choose shear, double click. I'm using a shear at an angle of negative nine degrees, and it's a vertical axis shear, and then hit okay. And I'm just gonna grab it and position it over here. And that looks pretty good. I actually could probably move it off even more. All right, so we are in really good shape. And next I'm going to grab a bunch of these decorative elements and lay them all out similar to, I, to what I did right here. Um, but instead of making you sit through and watch me do every single one of them, I'm gonna speed up the video so you can kind of see me doing it, but it won't take very long. So I will be right back. Okay, so now we've got our nice little decorative elements around our header, and now we can start dropping in uh, these month, day, and year little sections, uh, which you can fill in for your daily to-do list. So jumping back over here, we are going to input these lines, and we're gonna use our line tool, which you can get by hitting your backslash key on your keyboard and holding shift. Uh, the line tool is also over here in your toolbox if you wanna grab it there. We wanna make sure we have a stroke though. So right now we're filled with black so we're just gonna hit this little none over here select the stroke hit I on your keyboard and then hold shift and select this medium blue color now we can go back to our line tool the backslash key hold shift and then just draw out a line and that looks pretty good actually I'm gonna drag out some guides for us uh, so everything stays really consistent when we're laying everything out so we need to activate our rulers and you can do that by hitting Command R, Control R on a PC and you can see we've got rulers up here and we've got rulers on our side. So we're just gonna click on the side ruler and drag and I'm gonna come to like a quarter of an inch right here. And then I'm just gonna drag this one all the way older over holding shift. And I want the ends of my line right here to be curved instead of very blunt and chopped off. So I can change that by coming into my stroke palette, which if your stroke palette isn't open, you can get to it by going window stroke, and then just choose rounded cap and rounded corner um, with it selected, obviously. Rounded cap, rounded corner. Now we've got rounded edges, so we're good to go. All right, that looks good. And now we are going to replicate this, so hold alt, click, drag, hold shift while you're dragging to keep it straight, and then we're just gonna do the same thing. Um, this little icon down here is alt, just FYI. Okay, so let me bring that a little closer, and now with all of them, we're gonna select them all, and we're gonna make sure they're evenly spaced apart. They look like they are, but just to be super sure, with them all selected, we're gonna hit this little icon up here, which is horizontal distribute center and you can see the center one toggled over a little bit, and now we know they're evenly spaced. So next we're going to type out using railway semi-bold in all caps, month, day, and year, and we're gonna make sure that our paragraph is center aligned, so we're just gonna click on this. Okay, so I'm gonna type out month, and let's come into the character palette, change this to railway semi-bold, all caps, and let me hit I on my keyboard and click on the blue. And we're gonna reduce this down to about six points. Drag it right here. And then I'm gonna hold Alt, click, Shift when you're dragging, and then type it out. Day, same thing, year. Okay, so we wanna make sure that each one of these is centered directly below our line. Um, and if we just selected both of them and then hit a line, you can see both of them kind of move and we don't want the line to move because we've just distributed all of these. So we know these are evenly spaced, but these are not. So in order to make sure the line stays put and the text is the only thing that moves. A nice little trick is you select both of these and, and then with both of them selected, you're just gonna click on the line once. You can see it's like an extra selection. And then you're just gonna click this little icon up here, horizontal line center. And that way just the text will move and not the line. So we're gonna do that again over here. 
click just one more time on the line and then hit our little horizontal dis or horizontal line center. Click, click the little icon. All right, so we're all set right here. So the next thing we need to do is create our little label ribbons right here, which are very similar to how we created our main ribbon up there. So we're just gonna freehand it one more time. So hit M on your keyboard for your rectangle tool, just freehand out a skinnier ribbon. And I'm just gonna hover over the center node, hit the plus key, click once, hit A on my keyboard, and this time I'm gonna hit the right arrow key to toggle it out a little bit. Hit I on my keyboard, change it to the color of light blue, drag it over. If you need to reduce the size, just make sure you hold shift when you're reducing the size. And since we have a quarter of an inch right here as our guide, we want a quarter of an inch over here as our guide as well. So I'm gonna click on my ruler, drag out a guide until I hit the quarter inch mark, and that looks good. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, type out priority in all caps, change this to Bay Boss New, change this to book. I want it touching this guideline so everything stays super aligned and looks really good. I wanna make sure my paragraph is now aligned left instead of centered. So bring it over, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna change the color. Uh, to this blue, whoops, to this blue. And now I'm gonna copy that and type out must get done no matter what. And we're gonna change this to uh, railway and a nice little trick is if you type something out in one font and you wanna change it to some other font that you already have typed out, you can just hit I on your keyboard and just click on that font and it'll take on all the settings, which is pretty cool. Um, but we want this uh, left aligned instead of center aligned. And then we're just gonna center it right here on our little ribbon. Okay, so that's looking good. And then we just need a little ribbon for um, our done checkboxes. So we're gonna replicate this. So Alt, click, drag, hold shift. And if we just um, scale it down by going like this, it's gonna smush this arrow and we don't want that because we want things to be consistent. So in order to reduce it, you can just rubber band select, hit A on your keyboard first for your direct select tool. Rubber band select these two points and then you can just hit your arrow over key or hold it and you can reduce the size of your ribbon that way. Um, whoops, we're gonna type out done. Let's make sure if your ribbon's too big, you just go back and reduce it again. And we wanna make sure our arrow ends right on this guideline that we drew. And it seems like our arrow might be a little too long, so I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard, select these two points, and then arrow over to reduce the size. And that's feeling really good now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is drop in our lines. We are almost done. We've got all the groundwork, totally complete now. So what we can do is we can just grab our lines from before since that work is already done. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click, and drag a line down here. And I'm just gonna have it touch my guideline that we drew out earlier. And I'm gonna grab another guideline. So I'm gonna click on my left ruler and drag until I hit um, the end of what right here, the exc exclamation point. And then I'm gonna drag out this line to that guideline. And there are really two common ways where you can get a bunch of lines done very quickly that are evenly spaced. So the first way is taking your line, hold Alt, click, and drag, and then hold Shift while you're dragging to keep it straight, and drag it down to where you want your last line to be. And then you're gonna come over here to your blend tool, double click, and make sure specified steps is selected, and then choose how many lines you want uh, list items. So if you wanted 20 list items, put in 20 right here, hit OK, and then you're gonna have this little icon that pops up, and you're gonna click on the first line, and then you're gonna click on the second line, and it's just gonna fill it in with 20, um, 20 lines, so it's gonna blend the two together. So that's a really quick and easy way to make a bunch of lines at once. The other way, let me backtrack this. The other way is when you have your line right here, you can hold Alt, click and drag, and then hold Shift to keep it straight and kind of choose how wide you want it to be. 
And when you're happy with um, the space between, release, and then you can just hit Command D or Control D and it'll repeat that space. And you just keep going until you're done. So that's another way to do it. Those lines are a bit further apart. I'm gonna redo that. All right, so we've got our lines all set and now we need to do the exact same thing with our check boxes. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna grab a guideline. So I'm gonna click on my top ruler and drag it down to my first two lines. And then I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for my rectangle tool. I'm gonna hold shift and this will make it an even square. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna center it underneath done. Okay, and then I'm gonna hold Alt, click, drag, hold Shift until I hit the bottom guideline right there, and then I can just Command D the rest of the way. Or you can use the Blend tool. Either one works. Um, there's no wrong way right here. So if I turn off my guides, which is just Command semicolon or Control semicolon, just to kind of preview what everything's looking like. That's looking really good. Let's make sure our bottom box lined up right. Grab a guideline and yep, see we're good right there. Okay, so next what I like to do is give myself five priority lines and then everything else is just bonus if I can get to it. So over here you can see I've got five lines and then these ones are bonuses. So I'm gonna count out five lines right here. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna delete two lines so we can put another headline in here and have a nice enough space for it. So I'm just gonna grab everything right here. Alt, click, drag. And then we can change this title to optional. And then this one we're gonna title bonus points for these. And actually I wanna change the color of this and this to light blue. Oops. Okay. this to a darker blue. All right, we are good. So our whole list is all done now and it's looking really great. So from here, what we're gonna do is save it as an Illustrator file because it's really important to hold on to an editable Illustrator file. And then once you have your Illustrator file, now we're gonna create our print ready page that's not wasting paper at all that's going to look like this. So in order to do this, to get all your trim marks in here that are perfect, um, you're actually going to save it as a PDF. So I have a full tutorial on how to do this if you want a more in-depth look. It's called How to Print Multiple Layouts on a Page, and I will link to that in the video description. Um, but here's the down and dirty way. You just go File, Save As, and then when this pops up, um, I'm going to save this as To Do, and save it down here as a PDF, and hit Save. And then once this dialog box pops up, you're gonna come over here to marks and bleeds and make sure trim marks is checked and make sure bleeds, use document bleed settings is checked. Both of these are super important. And then hit save PDF. Next, we're gonna create a brand new document, file new, and this is gonna be our page that we're gonna print out. So we're gonna change this one to a letter size, um, horizontal or landscape orientation. We don't need a bleed on this, so I'm gonna hit zero. CMYK 300, hit okay. And now we're gonna go file, place, and a lot of people don't realize you can place a PDF in Illustrator, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab that PDF we just made and hit place. You're gonna get a little preview of it right here. Hit okay, and it's just gonna drop it in. And now once it's dropped in, I'm gonna hold alt, click, drag, and while I'm dragging, hold shift to keep it straight. And now I've got both of my to-do lists all print ready because we use CMYK for everything. Um, so everything will turn out very close to what you see on screen and we're gonna go. So that's how to create a custom design to-do list in Illustrator pretty quickly. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday and don't forget to head on over to my blog every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And once again, everything that was used in this entire tutorial, the colors, the free fonts, the flourishes, everything is in a blog post and I've linked to that blog post in the video description. So if you need anything, um, just click on that link and you will be able to access everything there. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.